Okay, so welcome to this lab. Uh, in this lab, we're going to learn that how we can collect social media data by using APIs, especially how we can collect tweets uh, by using tweet APIs. And also, we will see that how we can insert data into MongoDB in Python. So as we said, MongoDB is one of the most popular non-SQL database. Uh, so Twitter now is uh, one of the most popular social media. So let's see that how we can easily collect some tweets and also save that one into MongoDB database for future uh, data analysis. Uh, so first, you should have your own um, MongoDB uh, uh, database being um, created. So in our case, that is in MongoDB Atlas. So we are using the cloud version of the MongoDB database. And also, you should also have the Tweet API keys, which you can find out. You can apply for a Twitter account. And once based on with your Twitter account, uh, you can apply for a Twitter developer account. OK, so this is my Twitter developer account. And if you go to your portal, and you can see that I, I do have set, uh, one app, which is data mining. And where you can see I have those uh, apps. Um, and also within each app, if you click the details, you will be able to see the uh, tokens and also uh, secrets, secrets, etc. Okay, uh, so once you have those information ready, and I would put that one into this configure.ini file where you have those uh, tweet APIs, uh, access token is secrets. And for your MongoDB, you should have your um, MongoDB SRV string available, which contains uh, yeah, the, the host URL of your MongoDB database and also username and also password. So remember that to switch the username and password to your database uh, username and also your database password. So you can guess, get that string from MongoDB Atlas. So for example, um, tell that which version of the Python you are using. And so that is SRV um, address. So basically, this is your username, and this will be your password. So you have replaced with your own database username and so your own database password. OK, next, uh, we are going to use um, this notebook, demo notebook, which you can find out uh, from a GitHub uh, website. So let's download this one. So save the link as to the download folder and we go to our uh, instance and let's upload that downloaded notebook okay and let's rename this one let's call it uh, lab 10 and upload okay so now the lab 10 is being created and also uploaded uh, let's open that OK, uh, so if you haven't installed those Python libraries, so you may want to install those Python libraries first. Uh, since we already have installed those libraries during the lectures, so we can skip those part. And next, let's import those uh, Python libraries. Uh, so we need pymongo, uh, JSON, TwitPy for the stream API, Twitter for the REST API, uh, pprint to print the JSON document, config parser to load the uh, connection info and also the API and also API keys. And also we also want to use the pandas. So let's run. And next, let's load those API keys, secrets, and also config connection info into our uh, into Python. Okay. Uh, next, let's connect to our MongoDB cluster. So uh, make sure that you are using your own database. Uh, so if your database is GP1, then you should use GP1. Otherwise, you will have an error. So I'm using a demo. For the, for the collection, so here let's choose a different collection name. So let's call it Lab10. Okay. So by doing that, we will create a new collection in this demo database, and we will insert so uh, all the tweets into this collection, um, all the tweets we collected from this lab. 
And next, we create an index based on the ID key because the retinitis uh, do have an ID key. And also, we make sure that uh, all the IDs must be unique. So we can guarantee that uh, we will we only collect the, the unique tweets, so duplicate tweets will not be inserting. So let's run it. Okay, uh, so first let's try the stream API. So here let's run this, authorize our stream API. And here track is where define the keywords. So because we're going to collect tweets talking about COVID-19, so let's see COVID-19. And we are not going to use locations. So in this case, let's just comment out the locations. And in this example, so for stream API, the location is in Her is, a, is about Harrisonburg, Virginia. Okay, so let's just define the track. Remember that uh, the track and also locations are all relationship. So we just need a track for this lab. Okay. And now we can def we can run this cell that we are going to collect the tweets talking about COVID-19 all over the world in a real time. Okay, so every time we have a new tweet, new tweet, uh, we'll print out the tweet ID. And here in the filter, we just need track equal to track. We don't need the locations uh, because number one, uh, the relationship between location and track up is all. Number two, for this lab, we don't care where the tweets come from. So we we want to collect tweets all over the world. Okay, so let's run it. And now you can see uh, we have more and more tweets now in coming out. So uh, we can wait for like, uh, let's see, uh, a few seconds, not a few minutes, because uh, we do have a limitation of our MongoDB database. So let's say about 30 minutes and 30 seconds, sorry, 30 seconds. I'm happy with this uh, streaming API, so let's stop. Okay, so now that uh, the streaming API has been stopped. Okay, and you can see at the end, we have this error that means keyboard interrupt, which is fine. Okay. So let's continue. Let's say we also want to try the REST API. So here, let's say we authorize our REST API. Here, let's define the parameters. Again, we don't want to specify the location. So let's comment out the geocode. In this case, in this example, the geocode is on Harrisonburg. The count to be 100, which is the default number and also max number of the trees that have been returned in each single request. And the queue will be COVID-19. OK. And now let's use this um, REST API. So be because we don't need the geocode, so here let's also delete the geocode part. OK. So that means we will collect tweets all over the world and as long as they are talking about COVID-19. However, we are not collecting tweets in a real time, so we send out a single request and the single request will return no more than 100 tweets. Okay, that, that contains COVID-19. Okay, so let's run it. And I believe we should have uh, 100 tweets because COVID-19 is a very hot topic right now. And you can see all of the tweets are, are uh, collected today, and also this is the time zone, OK? Um, so if we want to collect more tweets, so if we want to collect the, the older tweets that sent out probably yesterday, uh, so we can continue by using the since ID and the max ID. So that will allow us to collect tweets that sent out several days ago. Remember that by using the standard REST API, we can collect tweets up to seven days, okay, up to in the past seven days. If you want the full archive of the tweets, you should use a premium API, which is not free. Okay, and similarly in this uh, collection, because we, we only care about the keywords, 
so we don't need the geo code so let's delete geo code as well however if you do want to connect using specific let's say states or regions you you do need that geo code and now let's run it and you can see that we have the tweets that connected earlier um however so be cautious of using this one because it may you may reach a rate limitation very fast okay so okay because there are too many tweets so uh looks like uh we cannot reach yesterday and we will use all the rate limitations okay uh, i'm going to stop here uh, because i believe i have at least more than 1000 tweets that from both rest api and also on uh, stream api okay let's move on let's see how many tweets being collected so here we are using the tweet collection dot estimate document count and also i also want to say that how many unique users has been collected so let's run it. Okay, actually, you see we have almost 4,000 tweets, okay? So if for some reason you have less than 1,000 tweets, uh, you can just go back and use either Stream API or the REST API to collect more tweets. But here, uh, 4, 000, almost 4,000 is definitely enough. And here I'm going to create an index. So for this text I key in the tweet, uh, I'm going to create an index, which is a text index. And I will set the default language is English. And uh, let's create that one. So the text index will allow us to um, uh, making queries, uh, making a full text query. Okay. And now let's view some uh, some tweets. So here, let's say we, we create a cursor and we want to find out that in the text field. Uh, so here you can find out, um, uh, say some tweets that contain some specific keywords. Uh, so for example, I want to see if the tweets contain keywords uh, election. Okay, because right now it is also election time. So see if something, someone are talking about election and not COVID-19, so let's, do that, and here I'm just going to see the the tweet context and also username. I just want to see the top ten. Okay, so here we do see that COVID nineteen and also um, and also elections. Okay, COVID nineteen and also elections. So if you change the different keywords, and you will see um, the result different. Uh, we can also do the same thing that in pandas. So let's say we also see one search the tweet talking about election. And we can also view the result as a, as a table, the data frame. So now you can see the tweet being created. Okay, text, uh, you, um, and also the other information. Okay, however, you will not be able to see the nested information for example, the retweeted status, etc. Uh, we can also use pandas to visualize uh, some results. For example, we can see that we want to see the uh, number of favorites. Okay, and we do see that most tweets have zero favorites, and also we do have see that one tweet actually has one favorite. And actually, we can also view the collected result from MongoDB editors. So you can see we do have an increase of write, okay, and also read um, recently. And let's look go to the collections. And now you can see here we do have a new collection uh, being created uh, beneath my demo database. So if we click that one. We see the size of this collection, and also we see the number of documents that is exactly the same that we saw in Python. And now you can see you see the full uh, information of those, those tweets. Okay, and if we expand, you can see the username, uh, retweeted status, 
and also whether or not they are using any hashtags, okay, um, and also whether or not they are matching any users. And if you go to the index, um, you can see that we have uh, three index. Uh, this is the ID, that is uh, um, MongoDB ID object ID, which is created by default. This I index ID index is one that we created, so we make sure that all the collectors are unique. And this text index is based on the Twitter.text key, so that is a text index that is special type index, so that can make those uh, full text search uh, faster. And if you know that how to make queries uh, in uh, MongoDB address, and you can use this online aggregation um, tool so that you can search your tweets uh, by using address. Okay, uh, finally, so before I start, uh, finish this lab, so let's close those notebook instances. And let's say we want to put, shut down that instance. And let's go to the Jupyter Lab. And also, you can see here we do have one that um, is not uh, tracked. So let's make that one. And also, let's commit that one. So we, we want to synchronize our local uh, instance with our GitHub repos our GitHub repository. So let's call it Lab Nine and commit. And also push. Okay. And now, if we see our uh, uh, GitHub repository, uh, so we will let's refresh it. We will see the lab nine. Actually, I called it lab ten. Sorry, that that's a mistake. So this is lab nine. Okay. And we will see the lab lab nine notebook. Okay, and finally, don't forget to shut down the instance.